Yeah, if you're looking to find happiness where you ain't gotta look no more, check the YouTube channel, look for Buddy the Borador. Remembrance Day is observed on the 11th of November to recall the hostilities in World War I on that date in 1918. Hostilities formally ended at the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month. The First World War officially ended with the signing of the Treaty of Versailles on the 28th of June 1919. As we remember those who lost their lives this Saturday, I thought it might be an idea to show everybody the history of our four-legged friends and the role they played in World War I. It is estimated by 1918, Germany had employed 30,000 dogs, Britain, France and Belgium over 20,000, and Italy had employed 3,000. America at first did not use dogs except to utilise a few hundred from the Allies for specific reasons, but later after a chance stowaway, the US produced the most decorated and highly ranked service dog in military history, Sergeant Stubby. Now Sergeant Stubby was a dog who was the official mascot of the 102nd Infantry Regiment and was assigned to the 26th Yankee Division. He served for 18 months and participated in 17 battles on the Western Front and he saved his regiment from surprise mustard gas attacks, found and comforted the wounded and once even caught a German soldier by the seat of his pants holding him there until American soldiers found him. He also has his own animated film coming out next year so watch out for that one and check it out on Google, I might put a link in the description below if you're interested in looking at that. He was homeless and hungry. Life on the streets was tough. Get out of here, you stinking mutt! Go! Then one day, ah. he met a soldier, and together they would embark on an adventure that would help change the world. <laughs> Military dogs in World War I were positioned in a variety of roles depending on their size, intelligence, and training. Lie down. <laughs> oh, I headbutt the camera. Generally, the roles fell into these categories. Sentry dogs. These dogs were patrolled using a short leash and they were trained to accompany usually one specific guard and were taught to give a warning signal such as a growl, bark or snarl to indicate when an unknown or suspect presence was in the secure area such as the camp or a military base. Scout dogs. These dogs were highly trained and had to be of a quiet, disciplined nature. Not like Buddy then. Their role was to work with soldiers on foot patrolling the terrain ahead of them. These dogs were useful to the military because they could detect enemy scents up to 1,000 yards away. Instead of barking and thus drawing the attention to the squad, the dogs would stiffen, raise their hackles and point their tails. This indicated that the enemy was encroaching upon the terrain. Scout dogs were widely used because they were highly efficient in avoiding detection of the squad. Casualty Dogs Casualty Dogs, or Mercy Dogs, were vital in World War I. These dogs were trained to find the wounded and dying on the battlefields and were equipped with medical supplies to aid those suffering. Those soldiers who could help themselves to supplies would tend to their own wounds, whilst other more gravely wounded soldiers would seek the company of a Mercy Dog to wait with them whilst they died. Messenger Dogs Dogs were used as messengers and proved to be as reliable if not more so than their human counterparts. A trained dog was faster than a human runner, presented less of a target to a sniper and could travel over any terrain. Above all, dogs proved to be extremely reliable if they were well trained. Major Edwin Richardson was convinced that dogs could play a vital role in modern warfare. He raised a large kennel of dogs on his farm on the east coast of Scotland and carried out experimental training in the sand dunes there. When his offer of sentry dogs was turned down by the army at the beginning of World War I, he turned to his other area of expertise, which was ambulance dogs. His services were taken up by the British Red Cross and in early August 1914 he travelled to Belgium with some of his trained bloodhounds. The dogs had special khaki coloured coats with the Red Cross to wear on the battlefield, as you can see in the picture I've put on the screen here. A breakthrough actually came in 1916 when an officer asked if a dog could be trained to carry messages on the front line. 
Richardson successfully trained two Airedales and on New Year's Eve, Wolf and Prince left for France. A breakthrough came in 1917 when the dogs were the first to bring the news of the attack on Vimy Ridge. The British generals were finally persuaded to allow Richardson to set up the British War Dog School at Shoeburyness in Essex. Mascot Dogs Dogs also had another role to play on the Western Front. For men trapped in the horrors of trench warfare, a dog in the trenches, whether a messenger dog or not, was a psychological comfort that took away, if only for a short time, the horrors they had to live through. Thanks a lot for watching today's history lesson. If you found it interesting and you've learned something, then pop a comment below for me and Buddy to read. I do read them all, so don't worry about that. And if you would like to make a donation to the British Legion, you can call 0845 845 1945 or to donate £3 via text message, text the word Poppy to 70020. Costs are £3 plus standard network charges, so I did want to make you all aware of that in case you were looking at your phone bill. I'm like, whoa, what the hell was that? Look forward to reading your comments, and Buddy and myself will see you on the next one. Thanks a lot. Yeah, if you're looking to find happiness where well, you ain't gotta look no more, check the YouTube channel. Look for Buddy the Borador. Dog training tips I know you can use. Even sell dog toys and product reviews. Welcome to the channel where you know we keep it live. Buddy's here to make you smile. You just gotta subscribe for all your dog needs and they never skip a beat. Consider this a treat. This is really all you need. Hey, Buddy the Borador. Uh, come on, Buddy the Borador. Yeah.